Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the Forerunner. This is the front seat. That's our recovery gear. Those are all the stickers of the places the Forerunner's been to. And then this is the back. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Mary and I are up here just north of Buena Vista camping for the weekend, and I figured, what the heck, let's do a, a walkthrough of the, of the build. So, she is in her natural beauty right now since we're out here camping dirty shits all over the place but we'll just start from the front here uh i was lucky enough this is an sr5 model but i was lucky enough to score one of the sport hoods on craigslist so happy about that got a satoshi grill uh just a factory front bumper got aux beam light bar might be having some something come up here in the near future swapping this out so stay tuned for that uh, nothing too exciting. Uh, we'll get under the hood here in a little bit. So we got the fourth gen sport wheels, powder coated bronze. They're wrapped in pizza cutters. They're, they're 255, 75, 17s, I think. Uh, BFG KO2s. I really love these tires. For suspension up front, we've got, uh, actually a completely custom set. The company I used to work for, we actually used to make a lot of racing components. I actually hand built my front set of shocks. So those are pretty awesome. They're single adjustable. So that gives me a little bit of tuning when I'm off-road. I went ahead and did the Tundra brake upgrade for the front, and that has been very nice. Uh, it's still as slow to stop, but way better, way better than factory. Got these fancy schmancy TEQ valve stem covers. Not that that really matters, but they're fun. <laughs> uh, working our way back. Got a set of rock sliders from 4X Innovations. They're built like absolute tanks. Uh, they're a weld-on kit and they're really affordable, which is quite nice when you're somebody who's on a budget. Painted those since they get bashed up. I didn't worry about powder coating them. Just touch them up with paint whenever I need. Up top, we've got a homemade roof rack. So I actually welded this up. It's kind of inspired by like the Gobi style racks. Uh, pretty happy with it actually uh, I built this before we got the rooftop tent and if I were to do it again I'd probably go with more of a platform style but I've been really happy with this and it's held up great got just a wind fairing up front and a light bar as well on top of that obviously we've got our roof nest uh, what is it I forget the series like a Falcon 2 or something I don't remember but it has been fantastic. We actually scored that on Facebook, no, Craigslist, and got a heck of a deal. Very happy with it. We used to sleep inside on a sleeping platform that we've got, and I can show you that as well. This is just so much nicer. We don't have to empty out the truck every time we want to go to bed. Very nice. What else? Rear suspension, running uh, some OME, I think 861 coils. So they're the really heavy duty coils and you need to have a bunch of extra weight in order to run them. Otherwise you end up with like eight inches of lift and it's, it's insane. So we've got obviously that accounted for and then I've got some Land Cruiser, some of their extended shocks for the rear. So I get quite a bit of flex out of the rear end, which is very nice. Uh, underneath in the rear here, uh, I actually got a, a factory e-locker that I swapped in from a junkyard. And that has been a lifesaver. Okay, Mary helped me. We actually picked that up on a on a vacation <laughs> trip down to Hot Springs, Arkansas. And Mary was cool enough to let me stop into a junkyard and pull it. So that was a big win. So running that, uh, probably going to be re-gearing here soon. Got to save up some money for that, but it's kind of kind of needed at this point, especially now that we're living up here in Colorado. Rear diff breather, nothing fancy down there got this rear bumper which again so i'm kind of a budget kind of guy and fortunately i've got some handy skills so i actually built this as well designed it i got real nerdy with it i 3d modeled the whole thing it's kind of inspired by a number of different bumpers that i've seen but it's got the rear tire carry carry rear tire carrier jerry can mount paying a little homage to some older Toyota. So this is a, like a first year, second gen, forerunner license plate light and mount. Big fan of that. Got a sweet bottle opener here. 
that I had custom laser cut. Trasheroo, we've been using that mostly to cure our firewood and then also packing out our trash at the end of a campsite, at the end of a, and then packing out our trash at the, at the end of a, <laughs> and then packing out our trash. <laughs> um, so bumper's got a tire swing out, got a double lock system here and make sure it's not going anywhere. It swings out, locks in place. The the hinge kit is actually something I bought, I think from 4X Innovations as well. And it's a tank, I love that. Drop down table for when we're camping, and cooking rather. Uh, put our camp stove up here. And with the propane bottle, we still have room to do a little prep for veggies and meat and whatever else we're cooking for the night. That's been hugely helpful. What else am I missing? Got a ladder, and I've been using that when we would go up and mount stuff on the roof rack. Don't use it so much anymore, and with the roof nest, we actually, it came with a, a telescoping ladder, but got it for emergencies, and actually, now we just strap our max tracks to it, so that works, since I don't have an actual mount for those. We've got a, a Rhino Rack Sunseeker awning, which we actually ended up getting that from the same guy that we got the roof nest from. And that thing's been fantastic. When it's raining or just, so we took a trip out to Moab uh, and I guess the rest of Utah really. Huge lifesaver when it comes to protecting you from the sun. It's a big, I think eight foot long and then it comes out like another eight feet I think. So tons of coverage, which is very nice. All right, here is the sleeping platform that I built. And this is where we used to sleep. It's got a hinge section right behind the rear seats and it folds over and it can pack away so we can actually still keep the rear seats in, which is really nice for hauling people around. Right now we just use it as gear storage and a, yeah, pretty much just gear storage. So it's a mess right now again, because well, we're out camping and we're using it. Got a short drawer here full of sleeping bags and whatnot cups and then this is our longer drawer it's got uh, camp chairs tools axe all that good stuff and then it's got all kinds of little cubbies along the side here just for extra storage of goodies this thing has treated us really well but we are happy to be up in the rooftop tent now got a lot more freedom with it Got just a little homemade molly panel here for strapping some gear up to. Typically have a hatchet mounted up there. Into the cockpit, we've got fire extinguisher. That is key when you're out here by yourself and making fires and doing whatever. You need to be able to have, have a means of putting out a fire. So in here, we've got our Oxbeam switch panel. This thing, I love it. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than the Switch Pro. I think that's the name of it, Switch Pro. And it works out really well. I can show you the box when we crack the hood, but pretty much you only have to run one set of wires in through your bulkhead and in, in through your firewall. And that runs to this and everything else just plugs in under the dash. You can turn on, we've got air compressor, roof lights, backup lights, fan, you name it. But I had, I had previously a bunch of rocker switches in here and it all looked pretty, mm, a lot cleaner and easier to access really. Below I've got a transmission gauge having a way to monitor your trans temp is pretty important uh cb radio comms for when you're hitting the trails with a bunch of guys it is nice to be able to communicate super old radio <laughs> i need to upgrade that and my speakers and protection protection is always nice when you're out in the middle of nowhere on the on the trail in the woods you name it so i always have something like that with me don't get too excited. Nothing too special under here. I don't have a supercharger. So this is that aux beam box that I was talking about that goes with the switch panel. It's pretty much anytime you wire up a new accessory, you just run your wires to this and you don't have to run anything else through your firewall. Very nice. Very nice. New radiator. Uh, I've got a fan with a trans cooler. So again, transmissions like to get pretty warm when you're hitting the trails, especially on these old buggies. 
So I put in an aftermarket trans cooler with a fan. Fan runs to a switch. Cool. And then I've got a Vier air compressor, which just recently mounted that up. And that's been awesome because whenever we hit the trails, we've got to air down the tires because otherwise it's just too damn rough. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. So having a, having a way to air your tires back up is pretty key. And that about covers it. You know, the engine. Yeah, the engine. Oh, yeah, this is the engine. It's still pretty hot. <laughs> so <laughs> that pretty much, you're the worst. That pretty much covers the build. As with most of you guys, this thing is ever changing and it'll probably be different in a month or two, but it's fantastic. If you're ever considering a third gen or you have one, mm, you know what I'm talking about. They're the best. They're tanks. My dad actually bought this one new in 98. So it got a lot of sentimental value in it. That's about all I got. Appreciate you guys checking it out.